Hello, and welcome to Quick Charge by Electrek. I'm Mikey G, and it's Tuesday, March 14th. Today, we get our first look at Tesla's first version 4 supercharger station, ushering in a newer era for DC fast charging. Tesla started to deploy its first known version 4 station in the Netherlands. However, it was covered up until now. Tesla is almost done putting the supercharger station together and has shown the unit standing proud. As expected, this stall is much taller than the previous generation, which allows Tesla to install the cable much higher up. This is leading to a longer overall cable. This will be particularly useful as more non-Tesla vehicles will start to use the network, as not every car has a charger in the same place the way that Tesla does. With the first station being deployed, we will soon learn more about its charging capabilities. Tesla has decided to walk away from millions of dollars in public funding for superchargers in California, and this is due to a requirement to integrate a payment system. Public money is flowing into electric vehicle infrastructure right now, including at the federal level, which Tesla is still pursuing. In the state of California, Tesla was in the running for a $6 million funding for four large supercharger stations with 420 charge points. But now we learn that Tesla has given up on the $6 million subsidies because it doesn't want to comply with the payment infrastructure requirements. Looking at the details, some programs require a charging station that have screens and credit card payment systems directly on the station to be eligible. Now, Tesla has always handled its payments through its mobile app, which has enabled them to simplify the design of the supercharger and remove potential failure points. A new report came out saying that Tesla has not renewed a contract with BYD for battery supply. However, that report was quickly denied. Tesla and BYD have developed into an unlikely partner recently, which is interesting considering that the two companies didn't used to be on friendly terms. There's an infamous interview in which Elon Musk literally laughs at BYD's electric vehicles, and after watching a promo video from BYD, I can kind of see why. I put a link in the description if you'd like to find it. Now, while they were mainly seen as competitors, the two companies started getting cozy together last year as Tesla started to buy battery cells from BYD. However, a new report from Korean Economic Daily cited sources saying Tesla has decided not to renew its supply contract with BYD. The claim was denied, and Elon Musk went as far as saying that the relations between the two companies are positive. This is good news for Tesla, considering that BYD is one of the rare battery suppliers that can supply lithium iron phosphate cells, which is a chemistry that Tesla is using for their cheaper vehicles. Honda is moving forward with the next stages as it gets ready to build electric vehicles here in the USA. The automaker is setting the stage for its planned EV hub in Ohio, with plans to transition the Marysville Auto Plant, where Honda began U.S. production in 1982, they're going to be building EVs. Looking to make up for lost time, Honda has revealed its plan to revamp business operations earlier this year. They announced in October that it was investing $700 million to retool three separate Ohio plants to prepare them for producing EVs and associated components. EV production is expected to begin at Marysville as early as January of 2024. Honda will consolidate two production lines that currently produce combustion engines and hybrid vehicles to make room. Interestingly, Honda says that it will maintain stable employment as it does the transition, unlike many legacy companies, which have been recently hit by a wave of layoffs. Volkswagen is doubling down on its EV strategy, investing nearly $200 billion over the next five years to ramp up production. Volkswagen plans for 68% of its new investments to go towards digitalization and electrification as it looks to solidify its position in the future of the auto industry. This is compared to the previous plans that only allocated 56% of investment. One of the biggest reasons for the increase is the PowerCo battery cell plant, which will cost about $16 billion. The news comes shortly after Volkswagen revealed plans to build over 200,000 Scout brand electric vehicles in South Carolina. However, production is not set to begin for those until 2026. EVs now account for 16% of Volkswagen Group's total orders, showing progress early in the legacy transition. Ford has teased a new mid-sized electric SUV based on the Volkswagen platform in a tiny little video. 
We don't know too much about the vehicle, other than it will be priced lower than the Mach-E and is slated for production in Cologne, perhaps a European-only model. The EV is set for release a week from Tuesday on March 21st. Germany has now formed an alliance with Italy and other additional territories in Eastern Europe to oppose the European Union's ban on combustion cars by 2035. They're holding out until exemptions are added for vehicles propelled entirely by carbon-neutral e-fuels. Germany's transport minister argued that the guidance on the use of carbon-neutral fuels remains unclear. Critics say that since e-fuels operate similarly to gas-powered diesel and combustion cars, they are extremely inefficient and a waste of renewable energy. Other entities in the automotive segment worry that the addition of e-fuels would create regulatory uncertainty. Now, the European Union's commission postponed the final vote on the ban as Germany's blessing would be required. The length of time required to pass any revised regulation to the combustion ban in Brussels could carry into the year 2024, and there's a chance that member states won't see another vote on the ban until after European Union elections next year. The year 2035 remains a critical expiry on the combustion engine sales in Europe, as the Union is trying to reach net zero emissions by 2050. In today's community comment found on YouTube, a few of you had questions regarding Tesla's new job positions for the Cybertruck paint department. Some of you casting doubt on the story, saying that the Cybertruck has no paint. Now, these are indeed positions that are listed on Tesla's official site. If you question the validity, you can follow the links yourself and apply for a job. Now, although the exterior of the truck is touted as having no paint, it's not to say that there is no paint at all. A large portion of any car's undercarriage is made of regular old steel and perhaps not stainless, and therefore there's a lot of paint needed to resist corrosion. If for no other reason than protecting the parts underneath, this is a good reason to have paint on the Cybertruck. There's also the possibility that a protective coating could be applied to the exterior of the truck itself. Now I say the word possibility knowing full well that it is Tesla's intent to not do this. But real-world testing may prove that a coating of some kind could be necessary. And Tesla has been doing real-world testing for at least a few months. In the knife world, there are consumer-available steels used in oceanic environments that are pushing the boundaries of corrosion resistance to the brink of not really being a factor. I've heard it said that any steel can technically rust, although we're pushing that testing method into very unlikely territory. And if there's any unlikely territory out there, I think the Cybertruck will find it. Tesla has applied for a patent for a new steel alloy to be used on the Cybertruck, and they claim that it outperforms other alloys, taking note of corrosion resistance in a few metrics. I'll be watching the truck with great interest, in particular seeing how the steel holds up when facing the challenges of public use and misuse. Who knows, maybe Tesla will have to resort to using a dendritic cobalt metal since it is impervious to rust. Thanks for watching Quick Charge by Electric. I'm Mikey G, and I hope you have a great day.